Greetings. Optimoves Marketing amid Corona here. Thanks for being with us and happy Friday. Today we have tips for e-commerce businesses, an interview with Deezer's VP Customer Engagement and a weekly news roundup. Um, it's Friday, so I'll mix things up a little bit. No picks by me today. I know that makes you sad, but cheer up. Here's Nitsan Pellet, Post Funnels Editor-in-Chief with a roundup of this week's news. Mr. Pellet? I am it. Thank you. So, um, what does IKEA, McDonald's, Lululemon, Peloton, Costco, Walmart, the MoMA, Pinterest, Amazon, DoorDash, Uber Eats, wait, there's more, Postmates, Dyson, GM, Ford, Microsoft, Google, and Apple all have in common? Well, a lot, obviously, but also they all took coronavirus related initiatives, um, either in the product, marketing, business, other aspect. And we at PostFunnel talked about all of them over the past few days, trying to both keep you, well, you and me, or readers, up to date with the most interesting initiatives, and also um, analyzing and putting things into perspective, seeing what other readers, what our readers um, can learn from the biggest names out there. Um, here we go, I'm swiping through them. So log on to postfunnel.com and check out everything we published over the last few days. Um, for example, how we broke down IKEA's messaging, McDonald's marketing strategy, uh, Lululemon's naturally shifting spaces, the rise of relevant marketing, and as you can see, a whole lot more. And finally, um, just a little something non-coronavirus related, a quiz, how smart about CRM are you? Well, it will make a couple of minutes go by a little quicker. So in this sense, it is coronavirus related, but um, supposed to be just a little nugget of uh, fun. Here we go, let's have a look. The first question is, what are different life cycle stages of clients? Starting easy, it gets a little harder. Um, that's it from Post Funnel for this week. Um, stay safe. Have a quiet weekend. This one here is a big believer in learning and getting inspired by others, especially in these times in which we must act quickly and adjust rapidly. Earlier this week, Yoav Vanai, VP Customer Engagement at Deezer, made some time to answer a few of my questions and shared from his and his team experience on how they dealt with the virus outbreak. Um, I'll share here part of our conversation. The full chat will be featured on our blog next week. Open the notebooks and start taking notes. This is super interesting. Um, enjoy. Hello, Yoav Banai, VP of Customer Engagement at Deezer. Hello, Amit. For our viewers that don't know what Deezer are doing, can you give us like that, you know, 20 second uh, pitch? Sure. Deezer is... Um music streaming uh, service. Uh, we provide our uh, users with all the audio entertainment they need, music, podcasts, audiobooks, uh, radios, and we're uh, available worldwide, 190 countries. So I'd expect uh, that that line of business wouldn't be uh, negatively impacted, if at all, so the opposite. I don't think uh, maybe other than Zoom that there's a lot of companies that are positively affected, uh, but we're definitely in a much more um, stable environment than uh, most people. Our business uh, is still needed, is still consumed and operated. It's uh, uh, too early to say if it's impacted positively or negatively, but we definitely see a change uh, in, in user behavior. So let's uh, get back to, you know, to, to, to your day-to-day. -day. How is your day-to-day -day impacted by the virus outbreak? Um, well, first thing, it is impacted by the fact that uh, I'm home, stuck at home, like all my other uh, team members uh, and employees. Um, so th I think the, the main thing that is impacted is, is exactly that, how we as a team work together. The second thing that is impacted by my day-to-day -day is, of course, the fact that, as we said, user behavior is changing. Uh, so there's a lot of being on top of all the data that we can to understand what the users actually need at this time and try to accommodate uh, for that. 
That, that makes perfect sense. And, and I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, that at some point you adjusted your marketing messages, marketing communications, channels, et cetera, amid the current situation. Yes, we adjusted uh, our tone of voice, our marketing methods, uh, and also um, the product uh, has been uh, adjusting. Um, of course, marketing has been shifted a lot from, you know, there's not a lot of point of doing out of home marketing uh, as there's no one out of home. Yeah. Uh, so shifting a lot towards actually more uh, in-house, uh, you know, marketing, whether it's through CRM uh, or uh, acquisition marketing on the uh, social networks. Um, but more importantly than the channels is actually the tone of voice, the messages that we're sending, uh, understanding the needs of the users and tailoring it to that. Um, but that is just, following the product uh, we try to shift the product to surface things uh, that are relevant at the moment shifting to another angle of uh, uh, this uh, this conversation so you know we all all of us marketers have our own challenges my question to you would be have your marketing challenges shifted um amid this current uh, uh, virus outbreak uh, yes, they've shifted. As we said, they're shifted uh, partly in terms of how we market. So our tools have narrowed, right? It's, we're still using the same tools, but our whole pipeline goes to fewer tools. I'm not using billboards anymore. Uh, I'm using mostly CRM tools, a little bit of acquisition, uh, digital acquisition tools. So it's actually the challenge is being more of a prioritization challenge, alignment challenge. How do we make sure that we can are not duplicating our work. If different markets have the same type of messages, can we somehow uh, work together? Um, how do we decide which campaigns are more important to prioritize that? A user might fall into two different buckets of segmentations that will uh, require two different uh, messages. How do we choose which one we should actually send to that one? So uh, those are, this is actually the main challenge right now is of prioritization and, and bandwidth trafficking. For sure, these are interesting times. Uh, yes. Another question I have is about the balance between acquisition and retention slash CRM. Many of, uh, of, of, you know, of, of marketing executives I speak with tend at these times to shift more resource into CRM from acquisition um, based on the notion that you know, people don't um, get acquainted to new solutions these days. They prefer you know, doing what, they, what they're used to do. How does that look like in, in, in Deezer? It's somewhat true. Uh, we are putting a lot more emphasis on, on CRM and on supporting our existing users and retaining our existing users. Um, we do still maintain healthy acquisitions. I think mostly we need to remember that Deezer also have a free tier. So while we might uh, not acquire paying users at the same rate because people are more cautious maybe, Although at the moment it's not what we're seeing and KPIs are healthy, uh, we still have a free, a very good free product that uh, generates a lot of new traffic and people can uh, come and see it. And actually people uh, would maybe want to acquire new habits as they're stuck at home and need something to do. And audio entertainment is, as we said, something that you'll still want and need uh, even if you're at home or maybe even more so if you're at home. Everyone's talking about, you know, how tough these times are. Um, but obviously there are some uh, uh, lemons we get that we can make lemonade. Is there anything that, you know, happened in the course of the last uh, couple of weeks um, that you didn't expect and, and you know, uh, surprised you uh, positively or, or something, you know, good that came out of uh, all of this uh, situation? Yeah, uh, there's a good coming out. Uh, I think uh, one thing, uh, positive, change in trends for user behavior that I see, for example, is people are using much more, using these are on much more devices. So mobile is becoming much less dominant and people are using much, much more desktop and Google Home or Alexa or whatever, smart speaker, TVs. Uh, and since these are is available on all devices uh, from all manufacturers, uh, we think it's a very healthy pattern to use the product with more touch points. To, to pretty much wrap things up and leave, you know, the conversation with those three dots at the end of it. Um, April 1st, 2021, what will we be speaking about? 
Uh, I think we will be speaking about uh, the exact same thing uh, we spoke about uh, one year after the previous uh, world economic crisis in 2009, Taylor Swift and uh, Kanye West. <laughs> Taylor Swift and Kanye West. Um, thank you very much, uh, Yoav, for your time. Um, some very interesting uh, uh, insights and inputs. Um, I hope you guys continue succeeding uh, during these turbulent times. Um, and yeah, keep, keep, uh, keep up the good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amit. Stay sane. In these times, e-commerce businesses must take measures in order to adjust and rethink almost everything to enable business continuity. Danny from our product marketing team curated six quick steps that e-coms should probably take these days. Danny? Hi, everyone. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Um, today, I'd like to share with you my six tips for e-commerce businesses uh, during this hard, sensitive time. Um, as a marketer and as an online uh, avid shopper, I know your pain, but I also understand your customers' pain. So even in this time when uh, it takes time to restock, everything is out of stock so quickly, um, uh, delivery services work partially, uh, your customers still deserve a great customer experience. So let me share my screen with a blog post that I wrote at Optimo's blog. So um, my first tip would be to focus on what you can offer to your customers that help them in this new reality. So for example, create lists of Working from home, here's a list of our most comfortable sweaters. Sitting on a sofa all day, here are some of our low calorie snacks. And connect specific items to specific situations that customer experience right now. Um, now, I don't know if you noticed, but many restaurants around the globe have started suggesting coupons for discounted dinners for future dates. So buy now at lower price and get later to keep on a cash flow during these days. So my second tip was inspired by that. Segment your most loyal customers, reach out to them, and offer them to support your business by buying now and getting later. My third tip might sound obvious, but some brands haven't done it yet. Create a button for customers to sign up for email notifications when an item is back on stock. So simple and so thoughtful. Great customer experience. Now, let's talk about your uh, cart abandonment email. Usually, your cart abandonment email would look something like that, right? Uh, encouraging to buy now, button, great. But we all know that um, it might be hard to provide those items uh, anytime soon. So, Let's use this real estate and make it uh, more actionable considering the situation. So for example, we can create a save, um, save your cart button, prompting your customers to click and save their cart for a future buy. I know it might request some development on your side, so to make things uh, simpler, you can just add a simple sentence, reply to this email, and we will save your cart and let you know uh, when one or more of your items are back. Now, let's take that tip one step further and uh, use dynamic email that presents uh, real-time inventory so whenever your customer opens that email, they will get live inventory data and updated pricing. Awesome user experience, right? Uh, you can read further in the blog post. Now, lastly, uh, try to avoid this. Um, that gives zero options to your customers. I know it's challenging, but try to compensate by giving your customers an alternative, similar items, so you won't end up like this. Um, now, to sum up, in the long term, I think this crisis uh, might lead to an increase in e-commerce adoption and um, and increase in your um, target audience. So um, stay creative, hold on, and this too shall pass. 
Back to you, Amit. And we're done for the week. I hope you enjoyed our picks. We'll be back Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Have an amazing, amazing, amazing weekend. Energize. Keep safe.